How did you find Kennedy? Oh, really? Where about? Well, it's a great place to go, so uh, I recommend it. And Balloon Kenya, when you see that, what do you think of straight away? Quite air balloon. Quite air balloon, man. yeah, that's getting downside. They've got a really cool uh, logo. But uh, when we were there, most people thought what we were doing was uh, quite air balloon ride, so the Masai Mara. <laughs> the Masai Mara is a great place to go to if you want to go to the Masai Mara. Um, so a little bit about me. I'm Dan Garlic. I'm uh, 21. Uh, I can do business study. I've got my uh, course leader here as well, Amanda. Um, I'm the finance director, it sounds quite a huge title, um, of the Enterprise Society. So if anyone wants to join the Enterprise Society, I do a sales pitch for that. We're launching it next Wednesday at 5 o'clock in the presentation suite. So uh, we've got quite a few events <laughs> planned for that. And the Enterprise Week as well, we're looking at getting quite a lot of entrepreneurs involved. So we're really talks with uh, Jason from the Gadget Show at the moment and uh, Rachel Elmer, who was the former Dragon and um, creator of Bernadette. Thank you. I uh, finished a year on Facebook with Bosch. So I was working in the state market, worked in Germany. It wasn't really uh, that glamorous. It was good though, it was a really good experience. So I worked in finance for a year, uh, controlling, looking after their budget. So that was quite cool. Um, and then this year, what I'm going to talk to you today about is uh, the time I spent in Kenya. So, um, so Kenya, we've got 10 million young people are unemployed. So that's 65% of 18 to 35. That's a huge chunk of that population. So the population of Kenya is just over 40 million. And yeah, 92% of people have just got a basic schooling, so they're not as fortunate here. And when I was there, I noticed that it would be often education I'll talk about in a minute, but they just jumped at the chance to get to education, which is really good. Um, it's a massive entrepreneurial culture. Everyone says they're an entrepreneur. They don't necessarily know what an entrepreneur is, but everyone is one. So what is Balloon Kenya? It was founded um, in 2011 by two graduates. One of them did a master's, and he did his uh, dissertation for his master's in Kenya looking at the uh, post-electoral violence. So in 2007, um, when there was an election, um, there was a war between different tribes. And uh, he was um, looking in his politics degree, his politics masters, how that had affected the Kenyan population. And he noticed that although they were suffering and struggling, they wanted to go out and do something, and they didn't want to sit around doing nothing. Um, so it's a six-week program. And the first week, it was a bit disruptive this year because uh, two days before I landed in Nairobi, uh, Nairobi airport stood the fire. So I woke up on the Wednesday morning and uh, yeah, I've got three or four missed calls from my friends and uh, loads of texts. Like, Are you okay? Are you okay? I'm like, I'm fine, I'm in bed. <laughs> so I uh, loaded the BBC News, had a flip through, and bam, straight in my face is Nairobi airport with flames coming out of it, which is an ideal. So uh, I'm trying to keep it cool. So uh, I've my placement, I couldn't rush around quite a bit. So, uh, um, that's from 4,000 miles, somewhere halfway down the world, and yeah, the airport is uh, on fire, so it's not a great start. So we've got a Facebook group for the Balloon Kenya, and everyone's going a bit crazy. Oh, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Okay, yeah, guys, keep calm, keep calm, it's okay. So uh, what I did do is I ran my travel company, and they managed to sort it. So they flew me to Rwanda, and we were supposed to have a 15 minute uh, stopover, no, about 45 minute stopover in Rwanda, which ended up being two and a half hours, but that was a good introduction to African and Kenyan time. Uh, and then we flew to Entebbe, uh, the capital of Uganda, um, arrived at about half one in the morning, stayed in a hotel for two hours, tried to get a little bit of sleep. Um, and then had a, we got told it was gonna be 10 hours drive to Nairobi. Um, and we knew that where I was stopping was three hours away from Nairobi. Uh, so yeah, I thought it was gonna take about seven hours. And then uh, 15 and a half hours later, I arrived at my hotel. Um, so everyone was flying from all over the place. And obviously, a bit of a spanner in the work for the project, but they managed to handle it really well. So we had people coming in from Tanzania, and various airports across Kenya, and everyone was meant to come through Nairobi. But it handled out really well. Um, so this year, they took 50 international fellows. So I was looking for a job in January, and obviously I do my placement and all that, so it's my CV. And uh, yeah, so I was applying for the banks, getting rejected. And uh, but through my placement, I learned about resilience anyway, so it wasn't really bothering me. And then I saw this thing about volunteering in Kenya, and I didn't realize it was gonna cost me quite a lot of money, but I just signed up anyway, because I thought it'd be a good experience. Um, so they had about 500 applicants, um, and they did 10 different interviews, and an assessment form. And then they picked 50 people from around the world. So there was people from Vietnam, America, quite a lot of European countries. So that's a really good mix of people. <coughs> um, so yeah, we worked this year with 200 local Kenyans um, for my project, for Spain too. So there was 25 of me, 
and 25 drew out like seven weeks before, and so a week gap between them. Um, so yeah, the first week is an educational based thing. So in a classroom, looking at ways how we can take an education and some kind of syllabus and teach and break it down to teach it to Kenyan who are in business. And then the second two weeks, we spend, I've had two groups, eight hours of each group broken into four two hour sessions and um, teaching them the syllabus that um, obviously we were doing. And then we spend the next three to four weeks working with the people individually, um, looking at the challenges, doing small things like spot analysis, look at their cash flows, look at the profit margin. Um, and then on the last weekend, they uh, pitch a funding. So they feel like the joint extent, they turn up, have a half an hour pitch uh, with investors in the local area and who have got the money to this money. And it aims, the catchphrase of the project aims to uh, empower entrepreneurs through enterprise and not aid. So what have I come back with? Um, international work experience. Although it was only six weeks, I think I probably learned nearly as much as I learned in my year long placement with Bosch, just because it was so different. Uh, cultural awareness. Um, it's really good because I know landed in Uganda, this 15 hour bus journey is kind of in a bubble because obviously I was like, protected on a bus and I could see through the glass and that's like the first experience I had of poverty. So it was like looking from the other side just on this bus and that was a massive wake up call. We drove through Kampala, which is the capital of Uganda, at 7 in the morning on a Sunday and I've never seen somewhere so busy. If you imagine Sheffield on a Sunday morning at 7 o'clock, you'd be dead and no one would be around. Um, so yeah, confidence to present, like before, I used to be quite nervous when I was doing my university presentations. Uh, but now I feel fine, I'm just like, I'm very sort of brown. I'm just in my mind. So um, yeah, drive to as much as I can at university, so I'm working with the guys in the uni, who are standing on the table at the back, because um, they helped me to get funding to go to Kenya. So, and then um, student ambassadors, but, um, student representatives, things like that. And then hopefully, the varied answers to promising based questions, so, more varied work and say that what we do with teams and we work with teams with energy and work with people. So, and a lot of friends from around the world who have spoken before about contact and building a network with people around the world and building Kenya to give me a chance to do that. I had a phone call about 10 minutes before I came up here from the uh, founder of Blue Kenya and he's like, hey man, how are you? And I was like, I'm good thanks. He's like, isn't that presentation you were today? And I was like, yeah, I'm going in 10 minutes. He's like, ah, cool, let me go get on. But because we were so close and we worked together for six weeks, then to family community. Um, so yeah, Hallam Union, this is a sales pitch for the Hallam Union. So Vanessa, I work with Vanessa. I uh, emailed the university, I went quiet for a little while, and then Vanessa pops up and I was like, oh, we're interested in what you're doing, we'd like to sponsor you. So uh, I was fortunate to get a thousand pounds from uh, Hallam Union. And then this year, after the success of what we did in Kenya this year, and um, my blog, how I could have been data, they want to send two students to Kenya next summer. So they're gonna do quite a strict application process to make sure we find the right person. And applications will open in early next year, so keep an eye for that. And uh, yeah, I've got a blog about what I was doing in Kenya, so it's about 20 odd posts about the challenges, a little bit about what I was doing. So wait at the weekends when I'm safari, I visit in Nairobi. Um, yes, I went to the Westgate Mall, obviously that one. But yeah, obviously you go to somewhere like Kenya, you've got fair state risk because the security is the same. And, um, being a white person in a country, you're often a target, but it's, everyone's welcome, but it's just your personal support for the rest. So you just have to be mindful of the time, I think, like on the security side as well. There's a risk, but I knew the risk I was associating myself with before I went. So. But the 
support that Project Gay like with regards to like security and stuff, what we need to do to make sure we were safe up to the safety was never really worried. So it's always like wherever you go I guess there's always gonna be a problem with safety but yeah. So you should be careful like nothing in your pockets because it's hard to pick pockets and stuff. So but don't be put up any great things. Everyone's so welcome. They welcome me back with open arms. Anyone know when I'm going back? And I keep getting my WhatsApp messages at like silly o'clock in the morning saying, Hey man, how are you? Did you actually, uh, were any of the entrepreneurs you were working with successful in getting funding? Getting a loan. Um, well, it's all character based because a lot of people can't put security against their loans. So, mm -hmm. what they haven't got a lot, but what I noticed is they're really happy. So, I work with one guy and he comes out with probably about 150, maybe two pounds a day. He's got a most bike and he makes about seven, eight pounds a day. He spends four, three to fifty to four pounds hiring the bike every day. And by the time he takes a few ones, the food comes out of nothing, he's happy. And then, so when you give them like a loan, they give them a loan for five, fifty thousand shillings, which is about three hundred and eighty pounds. And obviously that's quite a lot of money in Kenya. It's what you can buy for that amount. It's like crazy. But it's all on my trust that to say they pitch and they're funding and they want to make sure they're investing in the right people. So what they're doing at the moment is they've shortlisted who they're interested in, what kind of ideas we can do a little bit different. And now they go through the process of looking at these people and vetting them. Knowing something like that is actually quite useful, isn't it? Because it means that, I mean, that, that's true in most other countries that are developing economically, in India and so on. Most of the students that come from India to, to Holland borrow money at huge rates. It's just the risk of it. Yeah. And, and that idea of hiring a vehicle that you use every day. I mean, I, I was in India for about two weeks and this guy used to pick me up in his car. I thought it was his taxi, but it wasn't. He, but he had to pay every day to use the car. And what he wanted was his own car. Yeah. But the opportunity to get that was never going to come. We he put ideas. three daughters through university. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, yesterday I got a blue Kenya found a set of projects in Uganda, which uh, pays, uh, well, they buy people a bike, you know, they pay back. You are a global graduate. The world is somewhere you can look for a job, not just in the it's UK. Now, isn't it? yeah. and, and certainly as countries like the tiger economies like Brazil and China and so on become much more um, economically prosperous, then the chances are that that's where the sort of jobs you want might be. So you might you know, really need to consider. And um, I definitely recommend everybody read Sam's blog, which is really interesting. It's, um, it gives that sort of personal flavour to his experiences as well. Right, um, next on the list we've got Shazada um, Sadiq, who is a...